Here are some of our hook and ladders that we've run throughout the years. This is one from this year. Uh, we tried to dress it up with a little fly sweep motion to draw the defense. We taught our guy that was going to catch the, the pitch to come off the ball really lazy and, and make it look like the ball is going to be run away, um, which kind of lulled this guy to sleep, the guy that's going to be trailing you, and then break out for it. wasn't a huge gain, but it did gain us uh, close to a first down or, or a first down. We got 13 off of it. So fake the fly sweep, come off really lazy, get that guy in a trail position, get a first down, all right, move the sticks. Not a ton of time that you need to practice that, and it's one that you can add into a lot of different looks from a lot of different formations. Um, a lot of different guys can catch that, that hook and ladder. So I think that's a good, it's a good one to have in your bucket anytime. Uh, you might need to pick up a first down one way or another. This next one is one that we had run a little diamond formation, uh, and we had run a, a wide receiver screen off the diamond formation. Uh, and then we said, hey, let's run a hook and ladder off of it as well. Um, and with that diamond formation and all the flow kind of going away from it, it it get, created a um, uh, you know flow going away, a loaded box and whatnot, and it really gave you numbers on the outside to hit it. If we would have been able to hit this one, uh, it, it's definitely a touchdown. Our guy caught it with his knee down. And he just simply couldn't get it, get it to where he needed to be. But you can see right here that if he catches this and catches that on the on the run, uh, he's he's off to the races, up the sideline. So we like that one. Little wide receiver screen hook and ladder. Uh, that one will go back in the playbook for later on uh, down the road. So one more time on that. Probably could have given it just a little bit more time to get a nice good throw out there. Uh, next one uh, is one that I like running from a hash, especially if they're a man-to-man -man team and they're going to empty out the box for it. Uh, and play their corner on this tight end, which is going to put nobody really outside of him. So we ran this one a couple couple years ago for for a big gain, where your tight end is simply just going to run, turn around inside. The wing is going to come underneath him. You always got to get a little bit deeper on a hook and ladder than you would on a normal hitch. Uh, so catch it, and then he's pitching it outside. And, and letting that guy run down the sidelines. Unfortunately, we were down quite a few players in this game, so we had to run the hook and ladder to one of our slower kids. Um, but you can see how if you put a real athlete in that spot, it could be one where you could sneak one on somebody and, and gain some good yards. But love, love running it to the fourth guy on that, you know, almost a quad set there with, with your receiver's you know, one, two, three, four, being a quad set, running it to the fourth guy who is easily lost in coverage. Next one, this is the Boise State uh, hook and ladder that everybody has, has known and seen. And this is our end of the play, end of the game call if we need one at the end of a game. We, we've thrown it three or four times. We've gotten some decent gains off of it. We haven't scored off of it. But it is the one that we go to when end of the, end of the game. We run it every Thursday, um, and we've had to use it. Uh, and, and it's been times where we felt like it was getting pretty close to popping. So here it is. Uh, this time we ran it with number number three as the guy catching the lateral. We've switched to having number two run it. Um, and you see on this one, it, it gave us a shot. He pitches it back to the quarterback. They work on this every Thursday. The quarterback usually ends up with it. Um, but it, it gave him a shot. I think I do have an end zone view of it. So right here you're feeling pretty good about it. Unfortunately they had angles, but you know what else are you going to call in that situation? 
Another attempt there. This was at the end of a half. We felt if we hit this one, that that he might have been gone because he was really clear. This guy has his back turned to him, doesn't see him. This guy, the running back's job is to come up and find somebody to lead block, but he actually picked up him out of the backfield. But if we felt if he could have caught that with his, there was nobody else anywhere near this one when he catch if he catches this. Everybody is running away from it. We thought he catches that lateral and he would have been gone and it would have been end of the uh, end of the half touchdown, which is a huge momentum swing. This was end of a half this year. We started running our, our dig a little bit deeper to give this a little bit more time. And then you, you, you just gotta, it's got to be a nice soft toss, just straight up or straight back, not not at the guy that's coming at you. Um, so, unfortunately, we've had to have a couple guys, a couple different guys, uh, run that because of injuries. And at the end of a game, you never know who you got left. So you do need to practice it with more than one guy, uh, which is the case here. The guy that we wanted to catch the lateral was out of the game. Uh, so we had a guy that we just had to simply had to throw it and say, hey, this is what you're going to do, drag across at about seven. And, and that's why this doesn't look very good in terms of the where he is um, because that number seven who's catching this, he hadn't practiced that. But let's see if we got an end zone, you can see if he does catch this, it, it's got a chance. Um, it's got a chance because that guy's biting up. He's right there. You know, 10's probably got an angle, but... You never know. Really, it tends the only guy that that probably is is making that play. All right, uh, and our next one is going to be one of my favorite types of trick plays, but hidden tight end plays. So I'm going to go in depth on all the hundreds of ways I've found over the years to try and hide tight ends to get cheap touchdowns. 